Let me tell you why you should always do a proper combat ascent when training, or you're gonna pay for it. It's Timothy Altsman, 9533 Training Consulting, and I want to give you one of those uh, uh, stories. People have asked, you know, what was what was SWIC school like? What was SWIC training like? Um, I get a lot of those out there, uh, and you know, I can tell you as much as I can. Um, but uh, a lot of it is, you know, a lot of physical, um, and you do a lot in the diving well, uh, or the what is it, the, the 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 training well, diving well. I was a lifeguard, so the deep well. I think it was like 18. Feet, 16 feet, I don't know, it was deep. Um, and I'm, I'm a fish in water. I always have been a uh, lifeguard in the Navy, lifeguard civilian, you know, I was, I was qualified as a beach lifeguard. I, I'm very comfortable in the water. Um, and whether it's the ocean or a bay or whatever, you, you know, I, was, I used to, when I used to lifeguard, it's people that would um, do um, competitive swimming and they couldn't see, you know, they'd swim in a lake or something and they couldn't see the, the bottom and it would freak them out because the water's murky. But we were doing some uh, 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 training of, we have to tie knots underwater. Uh, and the purpose of that is that if you lose a piece of equipment over the side of the boat, whether you use a gun um, or something you need to recover, you have to dive down and find it and then tie to it um, different knots, bowline, uh, square knot, um, half hitch. Uh, you have to tie these underwater so you can recover the item. Well. It sounds super, super simple. Uh, it sounds simple that, you know, you can just tie these knots really quick and easy on land, but the problem is, is the rope floats. And so as you're trying to tie these things, uh, the rope is floating around your hands. And as you're doing this, um, it's to make you get flustered. So, you know, you practice, you have a little, little cheater rope with you everywhere you go and you're always practicing your knots. So we went out at, uh, oh, dark early and it was cold. It was a cold morning and you sit on like these, um, aluminum bleacher benches in just <laughs> the canvas shorts. We call them catch me and those that know knows what goes along with those. Uh, these things did not stretch at all. And you had to wear um, a, 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 a Speedo underneath it because uh, you usually have a lot of people down underneath the uh, uh, diving well. There's a window down there, a lot of dignitaries down there and they don't want to see things they shouldn't see. So the beautiful part about it is that my last name starts with an A. So guess who goes first? Me. And so we had our warrant officer who was a SEAL um, from um, a, a famous SEAL team um, that is the precursor to the current SEAL team that everybody talked about. Um, his name is not important because I won't give his name. Um, for his own privacy and his own security. But he's standing on the diving well, and, on the diving board, sorry, diving board. He's standing on the diving board, and so, you know, it sticks out over the water, and he's looking straight down. It's like, hey, Alston, in the water, blah, blah, blah. Get in the water, and then you kind of, you know, you tread water right above it, and he's like, make sure you do a combat ascent. Now, a combat ascent is, is that when you are coming up <coughs> from uh, uh, underwater, you have your one arm pointed straight above your head and your other hand across your chest so that you don't bonk your head when you're coming up. Because assume that you are, uh, it's dark and you don't know where your boat is above you. You don't want to shoot up just with your head and knock yourself out underwater. So you have to have one hand above your head to catch any, if you were to hit anything, you can, you know, not knock, knock yourself out. So I go down and, you know, and there's an instructor down there with you and he's kind of watching you. And I think there's one floating and one down low. Um, just in scuba, you know, not, not breather, but uh, snorkel gear, fins and a mask. And I go down and I had a, I think it was a, I think it was a, um, I think it was a prop. I had to tie a bowline around it. And as I'm tying it, you know, it took a while to get down there, right? And I get down to the bottom and I got flustered. First time we've ever done it. I get flustered. I was like, ah. And finally I'm like, you know, you're trying to tie it and it's not working. I'm doing it backwards. I just, I go, I throw in the air and I go to shoot up. 
and you know, just straight whoosh, you know, full, full steam to the surface. And right before I hit the surface, I go, oh, shit. and what I do is, sorry, <laughs> I fan out in a big X to slow my ascent and I throw my arm up. And as I throw my arm up, I'm breaking the surface of the water with my elbow, and I throw it up. And as I do that, I look up and Warrant is literally above my head. He goes, was that a combat ascent? And I'm just like, uh, was that a combat ascent? Uh, he's like, get out of my water. I'm like, ah, oh, damn. So I climb out and he's like, go put your shirt on. We had just like our, our, just our t-shirt. And he said, go against the wall and into the thinking position. And I'm like, what is that? He's like, you know what that is? I'm like, no, sir. He's like, get over there. I'll tell you what it is. I'm like, okay. So thinking position. What the thinking position is, is assume you are sitting in a chair against the wall, but there's no chair involved. So your quads and you're at a perfect, perfect 90 degree angle to the deck. 90. And the shirt is just to make sure you don't get splinters up your back because you're gonna be sliding down that fence. So I go over and I get against the wall and he's like, lower, 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 and I get boom into that position. I'm sitting there and you know, your quads are like, hello, hello. Um, we are not liking the burning going on right now. And so I'm sitting there and I'm just like, God bless America. Now I wasn't the only one there. I wasn't the only one. There's other people that screwed up and you know, <clears throat> I've probably been there maybe, uh, I don't know, three minutes and it's starting to burn. And what I'm doing is I'm, you know, I'm using everything I can. I'm using mental. What, what is pissing me? What are the things that aren't, you know, piss me off in my life? And I'm focusing on that. Just, uh, just focusing on that, focusing on that, focusing on that to just take my mind off of my quads, which are burning to focus on, you know, getting through this evolution. And so we had another guy that, uh, uh, got called out by Warren. And of course, Warren tells him because uh, 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 he was such a noodle. He says, you know, if basically get, you know, crawl over there. I don't want you to fall on your face and knock out your teeth, which, you know, humiliated him. Who cares? And he gets over to the wall and within three seconds, he starts screaming and moaning. And I'm like, shut the, shut up. I don't need them focusing on us anymore. But he's screaming and moaning. I'm still there. And I've been there probably five minutes longer than him. Within three seconds, he's moaning. And so I'm just like, oh, this is such bonk because this guy is just causing so many problems that I start sliding down the wall. So as I'm sliding down the wall, I can't hold myself up. And he's like, you know, get back into position. I get up and get back up. And he, you know, hey, I'm not making any noise. My body is giving out before my mind. I've told you before, there's a lot more you can do than you think, but your body will give out before your mind. And what they're looking for is if I'm gonna quit, if I'm gonna complain. I didn't quit, I didn't say a thing. I just stood, just, well, I didn't sit, stand there. I, I squatted there in the think position forever. It felt like it was forever. It had to be at like 10, 15 minutes. I, it was a long time. And finally, I'm, I'm sliding down. He finally just goes, get over here. And I go to try and walk and my legs are burnt noodles. I'm just like wobbling. He's like, get over here. And I had to do push-ups now. And as I'm doing these push-ups, he's like, you know, give me 50. I think it was. Well, and I've got the warrant standing over me still. He now took, came off the, 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 um, the board, the diving board. And he's standing above me. It's like 50 push-ups. Now, anybody who could think they can do 50 perfect push-ups, you are lying. You are lying. Lying. So he's like 50 push-ups, And so I was like, okay, boom, start them out, get into them. And as I'm doing it, I've got one instructor. I remember him. I got one instructor on the side of me, one for instructor, blah, blah, blah. And I've got another one over here. They're both laying on the deck, just screaming at me. One for the Admiral, one for the Commandant. One for just all these, just throwing out names, right? And I'm just, and I get to like 30, I wanna say 35, 36. Now those that have ever been to the gym, you know, you're doing your bench press, where you lock up, can't go up, can't go down, you lock. I did that, doing push-ups. All of a sudden I go down, I'm like, oh shit, this is gonna suck. And I come up and then bam, lock, right in the middle. And I'm like, oh crap, I've got no strength to push myself up. And I'm thinking to myself, if I drop, I'm gonna bust up my teeth, cause I, I can't break my fall. 
So now a warrant's screaming on me, you know, get up, give me one more, blah, 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 blah. And I'm just, uh, just sitting there trying, right? And I'm not saying, oh, I can't do it, or uh, quit that whining. That sound like, you sound like such idiots when you do that. I'm stuck, and I'm trying my damnedest to push through it. And of course, the instructors are right in my face, screaming at me, you know, go, go, go. You can do it, you can do it, you know, one more. I don't think they said you could do it, and they gave me different words. <clears throat> and finally, he says, get off my deck. And I'm like, how do I do this? So what I did is I said, okay, well, I'm gonna hit the deck any way you think about it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop one arm and just land on my shoulder and then roll over. So finally, I think I dropped the right side, boom, landed on the deck on the right side, rolled over, got up, he's like, go sit down. And of course, you know, I go back and sit down on the, on the, the, the bleachers, um, which they did have one of those giant fans blowing on us all morning, making sure we were always wet. Uh, and cold. It was, oh, it was freezing. I don't have a lot of body fat on me. At least then I did not. And it was cold. I was shivering my ass off. But, you know, whatever is what it is. <clears throat> uh, but, wow. That was, uh, I still remember to this day. But, you know, it didn't break me. It only made me. It showed me what I could do. And I love that. I love that about the classes. I love that about special warfare. You can do more than you think. Do not give up. God, I hate people that give up. Or three seconds in, it's so hard. You haven't even done anything yet. But that is why you want to make sure you do a proper combat ascent. When you've got a warrant officer seal standing right over you, making sure you did it right. As always, on time, on target, never quit. Hoo-yah. <laughs>